för akademin. På min ena sida sitter professor Olle Eriksson, ordförande för Nobelkommittén i fysik. Och på andra sidan professor Göran Johansson, ledamot av Nobelkommittén för fysik och sakkunnig inom ämnet. My name is Hans Ellegren. I'm Secretary General of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. To my right is Professor Olle Eriksson, Chair of the Nobel Committee for Physics. And to my left, Professor Göran Johansson, member of the Nobel Committee for Physics and one of the experts in this field. Årets pris handlar om att möta kvantmekaniken på ny skala. This year's prize is about encountering quantum mechanics on a new scale. Kungliga vetenskapsakademin har idag beslutat att utdela 2025 års Nobelpris i fysik till John Clark, University of California at Berkeley, USA. Michelle Devore, Yale University och University of California at Santa Barbara, USA. Och John Martinis, University of California, Santa Barbara, USA. För upptäckten av makroskopisk kvantmekanisk tundling och energikvantisering i en elektrisk krets. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has today decided to award the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics to John Clark, University of California at Berkeley, USA, Michelle Devore, Yale University and University of California at Santa Barbara, USA, and John Martinez, University of California at Santa Barbara, USA, for the discovery of microscopic quantum mechanical tunneling and energy quantization in an electric circuit. Professor Eriksson will now give us a short summary of the prize. Please. This year we uh, celebrate the centennial anniversary of the discovery of quantum mechanics and the seminal publication of Werner von Heisenberg. This is a theory of the microcosmos, that of atoms and electrons. And there is no advanced technology used today that does not rely on quantum mechanics and quantum physics. Examples are easy to find in the room, mobile phones, computers, cameras, and the fiber optic cables that connect our world. Quantum mechanics stands on several pillars, most prominently uh, the energy quantization and the quantum mechanical tunneling phenomenon. This year's Nobel laureates have shown experimentally in studies published in the mid-1980s that quantum mechanical effects are found in new vistas outside of the realm of the microcosmos, hence embracing macroscopic objects. Thank you, Ole. And Professor Johansson, can you give us a more in-depth presentation of this year's prize? Yes, thank you. So, this year's prize is about quantum mechanical tunneling. This is a quantum mechanical effect that was discovered soon after Erwin Schrödinger published his famous wave equation in 1926, almost exactly 100 years ago. Soon after it was published, solutions were discovered where a particle could um, penetrate a classically impenetrable barrier. So to the left here, you see that exemplified by a wall and the little boy throwing a classical ball onto the wall. It always bounces back. However, quantum mechanical particles can sometimes appear on the other side of this classically impenetrable wall and it is as if it dug a small tunnel through the barrier. Hence the name. Soon after uh, tunneling was discovered, it was also discovered that it's not only an astonishing theoretical prediction, it also has practical implications in the subatomic world. So to the left, you see a big nuclei, uh, lots of protons and neutrons, 
And so-called alpha decay of these nuclei can be explained by the fact that the alpha particle, two neutrons and two protons, is bound, it's part and bound to the nucleus by a barrier. And classically, it would never ever leave the nucleus. However, due to quantum mechanical tunneling, it can appear outside of the nucleus, and thus you have radioactive decay. And the fact that it's quantum mechanical um, gives, um, tells that it's a completely random process. And also by calculating the width and the height of the barrier, you can calculate the average waiting time for this decay or the half-life. So, we understand that quantum mechanical tunneling is important in the subatomic world. However, can we observe larger systems that tunnel? This was a question raised by a Nobel laureate, Anthony Leggett, in 1978. He suggested that you, it should be possible to observe something called macroscopic quantum tunneling in a superconducting circuit. So how should we understand this? Well, in the upper picture here, you see a normal conductor. In the normal conductor, the electrons are very individual. They are fermions, and they are very easily distracted. So if you push a current through this conductor, they are easily, the electrons are easily distracted, and there is resistance. Thus, you always get the voltage across this conductor. In the second picture, you see how a superconductor works. Here, the electrons take each other two and two by the hand, and then they are much more, it's much harder to distract them. So then they can lead a current without any resistance at all, so there is current without any voltage, a supercurrent. In the lower picture, you see uh, another example, uh, you see also an illustration of how this works. It's actually so that all of the Cooper pairs lose their individuality altogether and they all condense into one uh, macroscopic state. So it's a, a one Cooper pair condensate which is determined by one uh, macroscopic wave function or a superconducting order parameter. And you see there is a small gap in, in the, between the two conductors in the lower picture, and that's the so-called Josephson junction. So in 1962, Brian Josephson predicted that you could, even if there is a small weak link or a gap in the conductor, you can still have a supercurrent. And he uh, derived simple equations for how the current and the voltage in this junction relates to the macroscopic wave function on the two sides of the, uh, of, of the weak link. And from his description, uh, you can do the following. You can, if you push a current through the Josephson junction, it can then appear in two different states. One without the voltage and one with a measurable voltage. And the switching between the zero voltage state and the state with the voltage is, uh, there is a barrier in between. And by detecting how this, uh, uh, how this switching occurs between the zero voltage state to the voltage state, this is how our three laureates um, managed to prove that there is qu macroscopic quantum tunneling. So, uh, to the left you see an illustration of uh, macroscopic quantum tunneling. So, it, they, our three laureates positioned, they push a current through the junction, and they, it was in a state so that it should not classically be able to switch. And yet, it switches from the zero voltage state to the state with the voltage. Although classically you see that it cannot switch. And if you're a physicist, you might realize that the smoking gun evidence for this macroscopic quantum tunneling are when the black dots here uh, deviate from the diagonal line. That's where macroscopic quantum tunneling dominates. 
So the three laureates, so this uh, breakthrough experiment was performed in 1985 at Berkeley, and the group leader, John Clark, had long experience of working with Josephson Junctions. Uh, John Martinez was his senior PhD student at the time, and Michel Devore was a postdoc coming from Saclay outside of Paris, with experience from low temperature physics, but not with Josephson Junctions. Molecular solids. Uh, so, this trio did not only do this breakthrough experiment, they also did another breakthrough experiment the same year. So, the name quantum physics comes from the fact that atoms absorb and emit energy in packages, so-called quanta. And by irradiating the Josephson junction with microwaves, they could verify that this macroscopic object absorbs energy in a quantized way. So there are quantized energy levels. So, yes, I just want to mention also that in this system of, Cooper, uh, of the Josephson junction, there are billions of Cooper pairs. So it's really a macroscopic object in that sense. Okay, so this might sound a little bit abstract. However, this is a sketch of this experimental setup coming from John Martinez's PhD thesis. So you see the scale bar to the right, one centimeter, and there you see the silicon chip with superconducting wires, and the Josephson junction is exactly where the two wires meet. You apply the current to the left at the power connector, and then you measure the voltage at the same place. And when you radiate with microwaves, you do that in the microwave contact on top. Then you also see there's a copper tubing and a copper powder inside, and that's a newly developed filter for this experiment that isolates the Josephson junction extremely well from the environment, which you need because these quantum effects are very sensitive to interaction with the environment. And I think to make it even a little bit less abstract, I also want to show you a modern quantum chip. So the silicon chip is the square in the middle here. There, is, there are superconductors on top. And then there are nine artificial atoms on this chip. And you can see them with your naked eye. So, the three laureates has established, so the picture illustrates how they have taken uh, quantum tunneling and uh, quantum physics from the subatomic world onto uh, electric chip. So now we had 40 years of uh, lots of groups in the world exploring quantum physics on a chip, engineering artificial atoms, exploring quantum physics in regimes which are hard to uh, get to with natural atoms, because you can engineer these artificial atoms. You can also uh, couple the superconducting atoms to mechanical oscillators, and then you probe uh, quantum properties of mechanical oscillators. And you may also have heard that this is one of the platforms where you can develop a uh, quantum computer. Thank you. Thank you, Göran. Uh, do we have Professor Clark with us on the phone?